Okay, guys, everyone out there that ordered the dual camera kits, we finally got them in. It's going to be slightly different to the original video we showed you. We're going to give you some extra features, and we actually made electronic interface because it was much more reliable, gave you a lot more features, easier to install, and I think you'll be much, much happier with it. So thank you for the wait, guys. But this is how you're going to do the installation. We show you in this video how to actually pull out the dash. But once you actually get the stereo and the dash out, it's going to be a new plug and play harness, which is super easy at the stereo. So what you're going to do, this kit's going to come like this. You're just going to unravel it. There's going to be two plugs, two white T-piece harnesses that go into the back of the stereo. Quick and easy to do. I'll show you right now. It's these two plugs, the ones closest to the driver's side, the main power plug and the one next to it. I'm gonna quickly undo them to show you. So this main power plug here, push the top center tab just to undo it and pull the one out next to it as well. There you go, guys. Really quick and easy to do. It's just gonna T-harness in. So you're gonna take your T-piece harness, plug it in. There's one. Second one, two. And then you're gonna take the other side of the harness and plug it back into the stereo. So let's do that. Make sure when you push them in, they should just click in and you'll hear the locking tab click. Done, one, two. Simple and easy to do, will not void your warranty. And then what you're gonna be left with is this. You're gonna be left with three plugs. Two RCAs, one power plug. It's gonna plug directly into this module. You can't get it wrong, power plug, black RCA, red RCA. It's simply gonna plug in, color for color. It will only go in one position. And that's your installation done. You can mount that behind your dash now. But these are your camera outputs, okay? So that's the original camera turn on. So you can actually turn your factory camera on anytime while driving. And then you've got an option for three additional cameras. Camera two is the one on the far right hand side. If you're looking at these RCAs, you'll notice there's a bit of gap on the left. Camera two, three, four. Okay, I apologize, we didn't get enough time to do casings for these for you guys out there, but we thought we'd get these kits out to you ASAP because everyone waited so long. And I'm gonna show you how it would work. We've mocked up a secondary camera here. So if you put your second trailer camera or caravan, ca caravan trailer camera, sorry, into camera two, that would be your installation. From there, you now have two one meter length cables, which is gonna be your switches. These are gonna to mount to your factory locations with the switches we're gonna include in the kit. I've already mounted these ones, so I'm gonna show you how we do it. You basically run them behind the dash. You can put them on the driver's side or directly under the stereo, mount the switches, they just plug in. Super easy, so no wiring required. Okay guys, so that's how it would be in the car. You've got the switches mounted down the bottom here now. I'll quickly show you how they're gonna look. You can mount them, like I said, on the other side of the vehicle, but as you can see, Camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. If you press camera one, it will turn on the factory reverse camera. And you can use that any time while driving. So that's for you guys out there just wanna use the factory reverse camera. If you press camera two, it will show you the secondary camera. So we've just mocked up a camera here for you, but you can actually switch between camera one, camera two, and you could go to camera three, which we haven't hooked up anything because we've got nothing to the other two inputs, camera four. So you can run up to four cameras. If you don't want camera three and four, don't put the switches in, it's completely up to you. Again, this will still work in reverse automatically and it won't affect any of that. So you can actually turn it on while driving and see camera two, three, four, whatever you like. So there you go guys, I hope you like that new interface. Much more reliable, it's gonna last a lot longer, really easy to use. So guys, I'm gonna show you how to pull the stereo apart and how to install the AutoChimp multi-camera kit. This is a 2020 onwards Tider Hilux with this style radio with the dials. It works on every single model, whether that be auto, manual, SR, Workmate, SR5, rugged, whatever you like. These are the tools you're gonna to require. It is very easy to install. Not many tools required. You need a short Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 mil ratcheting socket, a non-marring pry bar, which is just to help you remove the trim panels without scratching your dash. And if you really want, we're gonna use some tester tape, which just basically makes your installation nice and neat. This is a factory cloth tape that you can also buy from us.
All right, we're gonna step straight into the installation. So first up, we're gonna use, I'll stop that there. First, we're gonna remove this screw here on the speedometer. It is little, a little plastic scrivet. And what that means is a little Phillips head in the center. Phillips head screwdriver is what you're gonna be using. And you're gonna turn it anti-clockwise. And the idea is to do it really lightly. Because it's only a plastic screw, you don't want to be pushing it back into the center. Once you pull it down far enough, you should be able to put your fingers in there and pull it down. Let me see if it... There we go. And what it's gonna look like is basically just a little center of a screw. Really small, little plastic thing. Try and put it in the light there for you. Really easy to see. Once you pull the center out of this screw, there is a little outer ring that is still located in this position. What you want to do is put your hands behind the plastic shroud, but put one hand underneath as you pop it off, just so it doesn't fall out. And what you're gonna get is this little section here. And that is basically the center of the scrivet. So if I had the scrivet, it would locate in the center like that. Once that's loose, you've got enough room. We're gonna pull this panel off here which is really easy as well. We're gonna take the non-marring pry bar. You're gonna start over the passenger side. You're gonna slide it underneath the plastic trim, pull it towards you, and you're gonna run that along all through to the center of the dash without scratching your dash and pull it off. It literally just has clips every 10 centimeters or so, and you can sit it up on your dash. Be careful not to scratch your dash. From there, we're gonna pull the glove box out. Open your glove box, and what you can do here, I find it easy just to hold it from the middle and pull towards you. The glove box will remove. Again, no screws necessary. It is literally just located with these locking tabs. Put that on the back seat so you don't damage it. On this step, we're gonna pull out the air conditioning section of the dash, and this can be done with just holding onto it and pulling it forward. If you need to, use the non-marring pry bar to leverage it forward. You can then just sit it down in the center console. Next step, we're gonna take the 10 millimeter socket. There is four screws located, two in the bottom, one on the right, one on the left. And if we go up to the top here, one on the right, one on the left. You're gonna undo those. Be careful not to drop them into the dash. Anti-clockwise will undo them. If you can, use a magnetic screwdriver, but if not, just be careful not to drop them into your dash. As you pull them out, and you can use a Phillips head screwdriver if you like, but I find it's easier to use a 10 millimeter ratcheting socket. There you have it guys, four bolts. Once that's complete, the dash will then pull out you're easily going to be able to put your hand behind the fascia panel and pull forward, just holding it and supporting it under your hands. As you pull it forward, the seatbelt light on the left will actually still be plugged in. You want to reach your hand behind. There is a little locking tab on top of it, which I'll show you in just a second. And as you can see here, this is the locking tab. Just on the top of it, you're just going to push that down in the center and pull it out. And that will release the locking tab. From here, you wanna sit your stereo on the center console. It is best that you put a rag, a towel, or something underneath so you don't scratch any of your panels. What we're gonna to do today, we're gonna to install in these two blanks here. These are quite difficult to pull out. What you want to do is push them from behind, take your non-main pry bar, and slide it into the hole as you're sort of pushing. They will then clip out. As you can see, they just have a locking tab on the top and the bottom that just pinches together to remove the tabs. From there, you wanna take the cabling, slide it through the back of the panel and out the front. Then you will take your switch and install your switch. Camera one, camera two, oops. Plugs in. These cables will be la labeled cable one, cable two, so you will know which camera to install. Then push it back into position. 
and she is located in the factory location. Do the same for camera three and four if you have them. Once you've installed your switches into the position, you want to return the dash. Be careful to have the cigarette lighter closed. Sometimes people have this open and it gets locked up very hard to return the paddling. When you put this bottom panel in, ensure that the speedo section is forward as you slide it in. Once you put your aircon panel in guys, you want to put your glove box back into the position it was. Do this with the lid shut, slide straight in, clips into position. It's not in, there we go. All in. You want to ensure that you've got all four bolts located in the position so it doesn't move around. From there, you're going to put the top center trim in. It locates into the little holes. Yellow clips clip into the holes. Very easy to do. Start from your right hand side. Do everything in reverse. Paneling is on. Last step is a speedo cluster. This can be a little bit tricky. What you need to do is pull it towards the left hand side or the passenger side of the vehicle and slide it in. Once it's slided, slid in, sorry, you're gonna ensure that all this lines up very nice and neat around here. When it's in position, you can then put your scrivet back in. And the way you're gonna do this, pull the center out of the scrivet, put the little circular ring in first. You just basically push it up into the center. It takes a little while just to locate it. Pushes up, nice and tight. Take the center scrivet, and then push it into the center, push it in. That is the dash put back together.